from folks just like you and me to several U.S. presidents, here are the top people to blame for the 2008 financial crisis. Ordinary U.S. citizens helped to precipitate the financial crisis. Before 2008, subprime borrowers were taking out massive loans to pay for a home. The classification of subprime just means that a borrower has poor credit history or problems with debt and is more likely to default on their loans. Lenders usually charge higher interest rates to subprime borrowers because of greater inherent risk in lending to them. But due in part to the Federal Reserve's decision to significantly lower the federal funds rate, people who had no business taking out big loans were snatching up houses like they cured cancer. Hey, I'd like to buy a house, but I haven't saved any money for a down payment, and I don't think I can afford a high monthly interest rate. Can you help me out? Sure, because the value of your house will always go up. We don't need payments anymore. And we'll be able to give you a really low interest rate for a few years. We'll raise it later. What? Huh? Did you say something? What do you say? Also, we can give you a very special loan where you can verify your own employment and income. Really, those are just extraneous details, and I just gotta make sure I write something in this box. Fantastic! You're amazing! I love that you're willing to work with guys like me. Well, we don't actually lend you the money. A bank will do that. So we really don't care if you repay the loan or not. We still get our commission. Great! You're approved! That was weird. When we think of who's to blame for the financial crisis, the first things that come to mind are Wall Street traders or investment bankers. And we'll get to them, but ordinary people with bad credit, so people who might be just like you, or who are definitely just like me, in many ways were the first domino that fell, leading us to an economic collapse. Pop quiz, hotshot! The largest financial crisis in the history of the US was the Great Depression, which began in 1929. What do you think caused the Great Depression? See if you can guess the correct answer in the comment section below and stay tuned till later in the video to see if you're right. Investment Bankers In early 2007, one of the more complex and controversial corners of the bond world began to unravel. Very funny, Dom. Not that type of bond. Remember those banks that were mentioned earlier? The ones that were doing the actual lending? Well, they would take all of those subprime mortgage loans that they had been creating and sell them to an investment bank over on Wall Street. Many believe that these lenders were the cardinal cause for the crisis, but why would folks on Wall Street want a bunch of garbage subprime loans? Well, buckle up. <laughs> Ugh, yikes. How are we gonna get rid of these stinky mortgages? I got it. First, we'll create a new security and use these stinky mortgages as the collateral. We'll call it a CDO, and we can sell that back to investors and promise to pay them back as the mortgages are paid off. But these mortgages are junk. Why would people want to buy a bunch of them? Sure, individually, these are garbage loans. But if we pull them together, the security becomes diversified. Some of the loans will go bad, but certainly not all of them. And because housing prices always go up, there's really nothing to worry about. I don't think I follow. These stinky mortgages, they won't live on our balance sheet. We'll have a shell company hold on to them. And plenty of groups like school boards, small Norwegian towns, and even insurance companies will want to buy our CDOs because we'll present them as high quality, safe investments. Capiche? Okay. You want I should grab the blow? Yup. The market for CDOs, short for collateral debt obligations, skyrocketed in 2001. Housing prices started to decline and subprime borrowers couldn't sell their homes unless they took a loss. These mortgages were the core asset of the CDOs. Because the housing industry was so tightly intertwined with the financial sector, when the default started, the housing collapse took everything down with it. Rating agencies. Some experts also pass blame for the financial crash onto the credit rating agencies. The big three rating agencies are Standard & Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch Group. Their function is to rate a debtor's ability to pay back a debt. They're actually quite important to our society because there is asymmetrical information between borrowers and lenders. Rating agencies are considered crucial to both parties as they reduce the information gap. These agencies have been criticized for exaggerating the ratings of risky mortgage-backed securities which gave investors false confidence that they were safe vehicles for investment. 
Paul Krugman wrote in an op-ed in the New York Times that, quote, the skewed assessments in turn helped the financial system take on more risk than it could safely handle, end quote. I'm sure that you'll be comforted to learn that not much has changed with how the rating agencies do business since the global crash. Don't worry, the sequel crash is never as good as the original. Hedge funds. Hedge funds helped cause the financial crisis by adding too much risk to the banking system. This is an honest to goodness, real life example of irony because investors use hedge funds to reduce risk. Hedge funds are always under tremendous pressure to outperform the market. Back in the early 2000s, part of their strategy was to pair CDOs with guarantees called credit default swaps. Credit default swaps are essentially insurance policies that are supposed to help mitigate bond risk. Purchasers would buy swaps to protect against unlikely but devastating events. Buying swaps gave a false sense of security to the bond purchasers. They bought riskier and riskier debt, thinking that they were protected from any losses. That turned out to be a costly error. George W. Bush Many people are happy to assign blame to President Bush. <laughs> From the start of his presidency, George Bush embraced a governing philosophy of deregulation. That philosophy trickled down to the federal oversight agencies, which in turn eased off the banks and the mortgage brokers. Also, he was captain of the ship when it went belly up. Not a good look. Bill Clinton. President Bill Clinton's tenure was characterized by economic prosperity and financial deregulation, which in many ways set the stage for the crisis that was set to hit about a decade later. Clinton signed the Commodity Futures Modernization Act, which exempted credit default swaps from regulation. In 1995, Clinton loosened the housing rules by rewriting the Community Reinvestment Act. This put added pressure on banks to lend to low income and some prime borrowers. The Federal Reserve. The former chairman of the Federal Reserve, Ben Bernanke, wrote in his own book that the Fed, quote, didn't do enough to control risky lending, end quote. Critics also highlight that by pumping money into the U.S. economy during the crisis, Bernanke and the Fed increased inflation rates. Bernie. Everybody start pointing fingers at Bernie. No, not the socialist from Vermont. Bernie Madoff played a role in the financial crisis. Madoff's Ponzi scheme inflicted about $50 billion in losses. Now these losses didn't cause the crash, but besides the dollar figure, their cost was that Madoff pulled off the biggest financial fraud in history, right under the nose of regulators. The banks and hedge funds neglected due diligence and paid dearly for it. Revealing government and industry incompetence casts a wide shadow of doubt. This crimps the free trade of capital and makes downturns harder on the economy. Richard Fold. Richard Fold makes our list, not only because he was known as the Gorilla of Wall Street, but because if you use the common abbreviation of Richard, his name becomes hilarious. Fold was responsible for steering Lehman Brothers into the business of subprime mortgages. And when the market collapsed, so did Lehman. Hank Paulson. Hank Paulson was the Treasury Secretary when the financial crisis hit. Where did he work before that? Well, over at Goldman Sachs, of course. <laughs> Paulson almost single-handedly ran the U.S. economic policy for the last year of the Bush administration. The three main criticisms of Paulson was that he was late to the game in battling the financial crisis, that letting Lehman fail was a big mistake, and that the bailout bill that he did push through was a huge mess. It's answer time! The Great Depression was triggered by a stock market crash in 1929. The first day of the four-day collapse is known as Black Thursday. By the end, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 25% and lost $30 billion in market value. Alan Greenspan. The Federal Reserve Chairman who was in charge during the crash was Alan Greenspan. He had a good reputation before the crash. Greenspan prevented the 1987 stock market crash from spiraling into something much worse. In the 90s, he presided over a long period of economic and financial market success. But the super low interest rates that he brought in during the early 2000s 
coupled with his aversion to regulation, are now viewed as the leading cause for the mortgage crisis. He later admitted that he had made a mistake when he assumed that the financial markets could regulate themselves. 